Okay guys, I got a little treat for you today. Uh, I've got a borzoi here and you hardly ever see borzois. Now let me tell you what a borzoi is, theoretically. It's a wolfhound, right? So now, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, <laughs> what a borzoi looks like, I'm telling you it's a wolfhound. So get in your mind what a, a dog that chases and kills wolves look like, right? And uh, so now I'm gonna call him over here. Uh, Cracker Jack! That should be your first indication this ain't going to go right. Because <laughs> a wolfhound named Cracker Jack. Okay, and so this is what we have, guys. <laughs> Somehow or another, this dog here, it started out a couple of hundred years ago as a dog that was big and strong and would chase wolves. <laughs> well, it, it ain't chasing any wolves anymore. Can you imagine a big old wolf <laughs> running from this guy? But what they have evolved into is little sweeties, just little sweethearts. Oh, come here, Cracker Jack. You don't need to go see Eli. Cracker Jack. Oh, but now when I say they're little sweeties, they're not the hardest workers. Good. They're not the most pattern cognizant and they're definitely, you know, not the sturdiest little dogs. So like what we're going to talk about right now is like, you know, I bring this dog here and I'm going to try to teach this dog the same basic set of skills that I teach other dogs, but it's a very fragile little guy. And so when I'm working him, I have to be very, very deliberate with how I approach teaching him these skills. And I also have to set standards that are in, accord in accordance with his performance level, okay? It's not fair for me to hold this dog to the same performance threshold, the same performance metrics that I hold these labs and these Malinois that come out here. This is a nice, sweet little dog, but I have to be very careful with him. I wish there was a way right now for me to put in this uh, video how fragile this dog is. And you'll hear me talk about over and over and over again how like, you know, dogs need to be exercised, they need to be out engaging in mentally and physically complex activities, you know, from the time they're little. But guys, you have to be very careful with that. Now, in all honesty, like, uh, it, is, is the, the percentage of time that people spend talking about exercise being a negative thing, is it blown way out of proportion? Yes. Like by far, thousand to one, dogs that have health problems are related to being, you know, like not doing much, not getting into a wide variety of environments, okay? So almost, almost without fail, dogs that have problems, okay, it's because they don't do enough, not because they do too much. But there are certain breeds of dogs, like this little fella here, right? where you want to get out and you want to do a lot with them, okay? But a lot with them has to be tailored to what they're capable of, right? I mean, look at this dog's head. His whole head is only that big around, you know? And so he's fragile. He's got the littlest little, this, you know, fra most fragile little bones. And I love on him and I'm sweet with him. And I really let him take his own time and mature into these exercises. Okay. Now, another thing that goes on is I tailor the exercises for the dog's ability, both his mental ability and his physical ability, because this is not a dog that's bred to do a job in conjunction with a handler. And it's been a long, long time since these dogs were bred to do physically, um, uh, you know, taxing jobs like chase wolves and that's the reason i'm making this video because i thought this was so funny because like i can't imagine a time when this little dog could have been a threat to a wolf let's go i'm still going to do the same stuff though right just not at the same level like here's a proprioception drill notice how close i keep my hand to the dog good i stay really close to the dog because this dog's not see he's not particularly sure-footed good so i stay real close i stay real calm and I help him a lot. I provide him with a lot of help. So I don't want him to take a misstep. Good. I bring him off of each piece of equipment very easily. Oh, very nice, Cracker Jack. Come on, come on, come on, up. And like with these tires, we just completely avoid the tires. Tires are just too dangerous for this little dog. Now, this is low impact. Good. Very nice. It accomplishes what I need to accomplish, wait which is acclimates the dog to being up off the ground and having to balance, okay? But these railroad ties are wide enough, and this is structured so it's at my hip, so I can step in and body block him if he was to take a misstep. So it's very safe. Come on, come down. These steps are focused, or spaced perfectly. Good, very nice. Now notice I'm gonna stay with him. We're gonna come up here and I'm gonna guide him. Oh my gosh. Now even like this, this is hard for this little dog. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use a little bit of dog crack. Help him come over here. Come on, buddy, you can do it. But look how much extra help I'm having to give him. I mean, you know, I've got hundreds of videos online and you very rarely see me give a dog this much help. 
but I give them how much help they need. That's what you have to keep in mind, guys. When you're talking about doing exercise with small challenges, it's supposed to be challenging. It's not supposed to be something that they can fail at. Good. You want to challenge them, but leave them successful. Have successful repetitions. Ultimately, dog training is built on successful repetitions. Wait. Very nice. Now, this is hard for him right here. So I'm going to get in front of him. Come on, little man. You can do it. I'm going to get a little dog crack and help him down. I'm going to go real slow. I'm going to give him a treat in the middle. Good. And then we're going to try to get all the way off with perfect foot placement. I need this dog to get his feet perfect. I don't need the short hairs that are here and the Malinois in here and the labs. They don't need to be perfect, you know, because they're sturdy. This little guy is not sturdy, so I need him to have everything in exactly the right position. Come on, you can do it. Very nice. You see right there, he took a little bit of a misstep, but I was here and I had positioned him in a way that if he took a misstep, it wasn't a big deal. Come on, come on. Very nice. We'll come over here and put him on the exam table. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Oh, let's turn him around. Good dog. Gonna look at his teeth. See how his, you know, this is the same puppy that from the overbite video. And he seems to be making a little progress with that. Good. We're hoping he'll outgrow it. Very nice. I'm gonna try to take him down the slide. But again, I'm gonna stay up here. I'm gonna stay real close to him. Come on. Very nice. Oh, and we're gonna end our exercise. Uh, with a bit of time on the lion tamer stand. Get him to step up on here. Sit, good. Stay, but notice how I'm gonna hold on to his leash. I very rarely do this, but I'm gonna hold on to this guy's leash because I wanna be able to step in and keep him from taking a too quick of a misstep off of the lion tamer stand. Good, very nice. Now I'm gonna get excited once the leash is off of him and once his feet are back on the ground. Okay, watch. I'm going to help him down a little bit. You can get down. Oh, okay. Now you can go play, buddy. All right. And that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with dogs that, uh, you know, they're a little bit fragile. All right. Good luck. All right, so again, every time you're gonna do anything, guys, uh, make sure that you give your dogs a chance to potty because whenever their, a dog's body is at rest, even if it's 15 or 20 minutes, you know, their body's processing waste and uh, when you get them out to do a training session with them, uh, their body's gonna uh, eliminate that waste. Cracker Jack, come on. In anticipation of the upcoming exercise session. So the body processes weight, uh, waste, during rest and eliminates waste in anticipation of exercise. Always remember that's just a super simple rule. Like, you know, there's so many things that gets in the way of like when you're trying to take your dog to training club or whatever, so many things that gets in the way and makes the experience a bad experience that could be prevented, right? And your dog not performing well because it has to potty is one of those things. So any amount, even if you are training and you just had to put them back in the truck for a little while, every time you get them out of the truck, let them go potty. All right, so don't see boars always very often. So, uh, one of the things I'm trying to work on with this Borzoi is getting him to fetch a little bit. He loves to chase things because he's a sight hound. But like when we're out in the field, like with a lot of these dogs, <laughs> Cracker Jack, come on Cracker Jack. He likes to go get it, but he doesn't like to bring it back. So I put him in the fetching pen. Oh, and I really, he gets it and he takes off moving, but there's only one way to move, which is this way. And I'm here waiting and I get the ball and I make him understand the relationship between giving me the ball and the ball being thrown again. Because that's what he likes. He likes for the ball to move. Oh, good boy, Cracker Jack. Oh, yes, he loves it. He likes for the ball to move and him to get to chase it. Oh my gosh, you're a very good dog. And I'm gonna do one more repetition. Now you'll notice as he moves this way, he's kind of trying to run out this pen, <laughs> right? Because he's gonna get it and uh, you know, he's gonna get it and run off and try to make me chase him or go hide in the, hide in the bushes or whatever but I'm not gonna let that happen. And this way, by putting him in the fetching pen, I don't have to fuss at him. Oh, I can control where he goes, so I can guarantee that we get good repetitions. And then keep your repetitions low. You can do a lot of sessions per day, but keep your repetitions per session low so that you always leave the dog wanting more. Every time you leave your exercise pen or your hallway, you want the dog to be looking at you going, no, come on, Uncle Stoney, let's do it one more time. 